Hello and welcome to episode 27 of the By the Lakeside podcast. My name is Sandy and this is a podcast about my knitting and sewing that takes place here in my home, which is by the lake just outside of Toronto in Canada. It has been quite some time since I did a podcast. Much more time has passed than I had planned, but I think it's just that time of year we have been so busy around here. Um, just end of school year activities and our soccer schedule has changed and um, a few of our routines have changed. So I've been getting used to new routines. I've been trying to clean up the house again, which is really eating into a lot of time, but it's making me feel really good. Um, I've been purging and donating a lot of stuff, which turned into a bit of a craft room cleanup. Um, I have been trying to work on some things for my shop. So I got some new shelves and a new industrial sewing machine, which I am super excited about. And I've been posting on Instagram little sneak peeks of it here and there. So all that stuff has just been keeping me occupied and really excited about what's to come for my little shop. So if you are looking for me elsewhere, I have changed um, I have changed my Instagram username. So if you're looking for me on Instagram, it is my username is now Sandy by the Lakeside. Um, on Ravelry, I am Sandy Ran. And I also have a website, which is bythelakeside.com. And I have been working on a new website, actually. Um, I've been switching my platform and building a new website in hopes to shift over from Etsy very soon. So in all probability, my next update will be just directly through my website, which is bythelakeside.com and no longer through Etsy. And I think that might simplify things a little bit for me um, and also make the um, shopping experience a little bit better for you guys. So let's just jump right in. I feel a little out of practice, but I'm just going to jump right in today and hopefully it will uh, be bearable for you. The first thing that I have is a half object and I am super excited to share this with you. It is this beautiful Galliano sock from Tracy Miller, who is a part of the Grocery Girls, and I'm sure you all know who that is. She released this gorgeous, gorgeous sock pattern uh, just yesterday, actually, and I just finished my first one this morning. I feel very, very lucky to have been a test knitter for her. It was my first time test knitting. Um, so that was a new experience for me and I am not, you know, the best knitter or the fastest knitter. I, I tend to stick to vanilla socks and so I was a little worried about keeping up with this one, but it was such a pleasure to knit. If you can see here, it's got a twisted rib at the top. This beautiful cable pattern, which I've kind of shifted to the front so that you could see a bit, but that is on the front center of your sock. It's gorgeous and then this beautiful little eyelet detail and one of my favorite things is actually this little row here that kind of breaks the front from the back. I think it's beautiful. I'm really happy with how it turned out and um, as a vanilla sock knitter this was actually really really easy to memorize and keep on top of with very little um, worry about making mistakes. It was um, a, a little bit, you know, to remember in the front with your cable repeats, but it was actually um, quite an easy knit and I was, I was knitting it and watching movies and watching TV. So I am thrilled with it. I am very excited to cast on my second one. I'm going to do that very soon, I think. And the yarn that I used for this is this beautiful, nice and knit. Um, it's called Evening Swim, the colorway, and the base that I have is the um, Superwash Merino Cashmere and Nylon Sock. This was a gift from my friend Meg, and it's a beautiful, um, I think it's an exclusive color to the Wool and Honey shop in Michigan, which Meg is very nearby. And it just had this beautiful amount of speckles in it, and... I really like how it turned out on this sock. So 
I'm sure you've seen it already, but if you haven't, you should check this out on Ravelry. It is called the Galliano Sock by Tracy Miller. And if you're looking for something to knit this summer, a sock that's um, a little bit more than your average vanilla sock, but not too much, not too complicated, then I think this is a great pattern. And if you've never knit a pattern sock, I think this is also a great one. Um, the back half is vanilla, and then the front you will have your cable design. So I loved it. Thank you so much, Tracy, for uh, letting me knit for you as a test knitter. I am very happy to be able to check that off of my list now. So I've been mostly working on that sock. I haven't actually been knitting a lot. I think, I think when I finish a big project, like my Second Avenue wrap, which was featured in my last episode, I kind of take a little break. I step back and I really think about what I want to knit next. And you're going to see the results of that because I have tons of projects that I have in my dream knitting and I'm sort of setting aside to start. Um, but most of the knitting time that I've been um, spending has been on that sock. A little bit in between is in this project bag. It is A Girl's Best Friend Shawl by Isabel Kramer. And um, I haven't spent a ton of time on this, but the little progress I have made, I am very happy with. So I'm still in the first color. A little tangled here. Here it is. I think it's a beautiful pattern. I'm really enjoying it. It is also one that I have been able to keep up with with the kids in the room and a movie on and some distractions. So that is great because I easily lose track of where I am. And I have been talking about this color, which I am in love with by Madeline Tosh. It is really, really pretty. It's kind of a dirty pink, um, which I think is gonna be really nice. It's not overly pink for me. It's Madeline Tosh Merino Light, and the color of this one is Scout. And the other Madeline Tosh color I have for this project is Ginger. And then I have a Julie Asselin color in Broom, which is in the Fino base, and that's how you spell Broom. So I cannot wait to spend a little more time on this now that I've got one sock done. I am gonna cast on the second sock pretty soon, probably this weekend, but I haven't really been spending time on any other knitting projects. So I'm looking forward to making a dent in this one because I think it's beautiful. But as I was um, working on my sock and I had just finished a big project before that, I've really been doing some kind of dream knitting and there was one weekend where I um, very spontaneously decided to cast on a sweater and it is in this beautiful buku tote or box tote I think it's called and it is the little cabin by Caitlin Hunter it's a beautiful sweater the style of it really appealed to me um, and I had yarn so I caked up this beautiful Miss Babs oh, this is so huge it's Yaza. So that is the cake. It is massive. As you can see it in the skein, they are so big. It is um, in the colorway Moss and it's a light worsted yarn and it is 560 yards. So there's a lot of yarn here. And I got that in Rhinebeck and I think it's a beautiful color and I had it in mind for something else, but I don't know, there was just a weekend where I just really wanted to cast a sweater on and so I did. I barely started it um, and this is what I, I did very quickly after I started it and then I put it aside and I think it might hibernate just for a little bit. I do love it but I have so many other things that I want to knit right now and I'm feeling like this could be a project I do a little bit later. Um, a little bit later in the summer or maybe in my next round of new projects because there have been other Caitlin Hunter sweaters that have been calling my name, as I'm sure call, they call your name too, because everyone seems to be 
casting on a sweater from Boyland Knits. She is quite amazing, and I did watch the episode of Christy Glass Knits with um, Caitlin Hunter on it, and it really inspired me. So maybe I'll start with some dream knitting and show you what Caitlin Hunter plans I have. So I made a new large signature bag in my for my last update, and I really like this denim. It's kind of a, a chevron. A little bit hard to see but it's a blue denim um, quite heavy and I really really like it this one is lined with a little gingham so I like everyone and their mother am really feeling the urge to start a zwieg a zwieg or a zwieg whatever and I was trying to think of you know what colors I might have in my stash that I could use and I didn't really have a sweater sweater quantities worth but I did have these two beautiful skeins of um, drizzle the colorway is drizzle from the hey sister yarn company tabby and Rachel had sent these to me um, quite a long time ago and I've been hoarding them because I really love this color it's beautiful it is um, a fingering weight and I think this is the cashmere base let me just check Yes, so it's the merino wool cashmere base and it's gorgeous. So I had these in mind and um, I decided that if I just bought another skein or two of this and alternate skeins and that could be the body. So I did do that and I got a couple more skeins from the ladies and I think even though it's a different batch, I'll be able to alternate and they will be just fine. They're beautiful. And um, I started to think, well, if I'm using Drizzle, I wonder if they have something. So I was scanning through some of their old Instagram photos and I did see something that they posted and I thought it looked gorgeous. So um, it actually wasn't this one, but after messaging Tabby and Rachel, they helped me um, kind of pick out this beautiful color, which is the Shire, to go with it. And I think it's beautiful. Oh my goodness. I didn't want to go crazy with this one because I feel like this, this color, I don't know. I think it'll be flattering, but not. I didn't really want a crazy color with this beautiful kind of classic rusty brown. So sure enough, I turned on their episode shortly after I was speaking to them, their latest episode, I think, where they were talking about all of the sweaters that they are casting on. And I think Tabby actually had this as a, a pairing that she liked for um, for this week. So it's getting blown out there, but I am so excited about this. Very, very happy. And this color could not be more perfect. Look at that. So this is their Alonzi base. I think that that's how you say it, Alonzi, which is, um, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and the other ones that I have are the um, Fantastic Base, so it has cashmere in it. But the Shire is is really, um, it's kind of a neutral with all the little specks of green and gold and brown that I was hoping for in the yoke detail. So that is Dream Knitting sweater number one, and it's all ready to go. Well, I haven't um, caked it up yet, but it's ready to go in this bag. And I've only been waiting because I have yarn that should be here any day for the Tecumseh sweater. I ordered some uh, Quince & Co. yarn, and I'm really, really, I think I might wait for that one because I'm really excited about it. I've been seeing some beautiful combinations on Instagram and I think I just need it. I need it. So in this beautiful bag that is from Zigzag Stitches, I purchased this at Espace Trico quite a while ago, I think over a year ago. Um, and I like to take it out in the summer because it's so beautiful. It's very cool. And I have some yarn in here for another project another shawl. Um, it's a fairly new release from Quince & Co called The Bayou, designed by Layla Robb. And not the best picture because it's black and white, but it is a beautiful um, elongated shawl with a gorgeous lace pattern in it. 
I'm trying to see if there's another picture here. There is. As you can see here, it's really, really pretty. And I thought this would be um, such a nice summer knit. And when I was at, um, what was it? The knitters, the Toronto Knitters Frolic, forgot for a moment. Um, I picked up this gorgeous um, Kestrel from Quince & Co. And I've been really wanting to use this or try it out in a project. It's kind of like a, like a chainette kind of yarn, like a little tube. It is 100% um, organic lo linen. And I got the color Quill. So it's kind of a bluish, kind of a bluish gray, I guess. It's like, yeah, kind of a bluish gray. Beautiful color, very, very rich. And this is definitely a summer cast on. So I'm excited to do that. But you see my dilemma. There's too much here. I'm not a fast knitter, so I'm really struggling with how to balance what to start. I usually don't have too many projects going at once, so I'm definitely not casting on everything here. But you can see it's a problem. I also got this bag. I noticed that um, the uh, Fringe Supply Company released the, a new, well not new, but they re-released this camel color of their field bag because it was um, discontinued for some time, but she found someone to dye the fabric. And um, I picked it up in the Wool and Honey, I think it's the yarn shop, your local yarn shop kind of special day that happened recently. And my sweet friend Meg shipped it out to me from the store. Um, and Meg also sent me this gorgeous pin, which I put on there, and um, this fabulous cabin or farmhouse, uh, which I also really love. So this is sitting here empty because that is what my Tecumseh will be going into, because it's a new bag and I really want to use that. And the last um, project that I have set aside for this summer is this beautiful, in this beautiful bag from my friend Amy, who was the little tailoress, but is now Dogwood and Dandelion. Dandelion and Dogwood, no, Dandelion and Dogwood. She has rebranded her, um, her products and her collection, and I'm so excited about everything that she is doing. She has been dying up a storm, and everything looks so beautiful. But she knew that I really loved this um, kit that she had, and she um, so sweetly did a swap with me. So um, I'm so thrilled to have this. It was, I know the yarn here is called Happy Trails. I can't remember if the whole kit was called Happy Trails or the car something caravan and I camp and we have a camper and I just thought I had to have it. It's very retro, very beautiful and very Amy. And I don't have one of her bags. And I love it. It's um, structured, but not too stiff. It's um, got a really nice kind of batting inside. So it's it's got a really nice soft feel, but it doesn't flop over, which I think is perfect. And inside was this beautiful self-striping yarn with a mini. It's called Happy Trails. And it's gorgeous. Look at that. It's just perfect. Oh, and her um, little progress keeper so beautifully matches. So thank you so much, Amy. This was such a wonderful summer treat. I love it. And this beautiful little pouch that I can put a few stitch markers and things in um, and pop it inside. And of course, some sweets. And it's all perfect. So this is in my, um, my dream knitting pile because as soon as I go to start a new sock. This is going to be the one, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna bring this camping with us this year because it has to, it has to be camping. Look at it. Oh, I love it. So that is, um, I think everything other than I, I don't have the Tecumseh yarn here. That is everything that I have been dreaming about knitting, and I'm not sure how to do it all, but I need to devise a plan. 
So one of the other things that I finished since my last podcast was something that I sewed. Um, I was doing or pre preparing for my shop update and this new signature bag. So I had this gorgeous fabric in front of me and I was cutting out the, um, the webbing and I just immediately thought I need to make a tote bag out of this. And so I put everything from my shop aside and I drafted a pattern and played around with the shape and came up with a tote bag that I am just in love with and I've been using quite a bit this summer. I really, really like it. It's um, unlined, but it's in this really nice sturdy denim and I've got the um, webbing for straps, but what I really loved about it is that it's got a shape to it. So it's a little, um, it's a little modern and the opening is smaller than the bottom. So I really wanted to have um, a base on the bottom so you can really fill it up with stuff. So you can see that, that there. And um, the top goes in so that everything's not spilling out because I do have a lot of kind of shopping totes that I love and I use but when you set them down, like if I'm at soccer and I wanna set it down, it kind of flops down. And um, if you've really got it packed with things, it can be a little bit messy. So I just, I kind of thought, what if I did something that closed a little bit up at the top, but still allowed you to fill it up with yarn if you're at a festival or at a knit night and you've got some projects you wanna fill it up with. So I'm really happy with it. And um, I am going to make some to put in the shop. For now, um, I've just got the one and I've been kind of um, waiting for some materials to come in, some more webbing. And it's unlined, but it's it's got all French seams, so it's quite clean inside, you can see. Um, no raw edges because it's kind of one of my things. I don't really like having raw edges either, so I put the label, I buy the Lakeside label on there and I'm really loving it. It's just been a really nice kind of spring summer tote. Um, great for the farmer's market or um, just bringing your knitting. We went on a weekend away and this was the bag that I brought all of my knitting projects in. So that has been something fun. Whew, it is so hot in here. I have the window shut because our neighbors behind us are having their roof done. So if I look red and my hair is frizzing, that's why. So um, the next thing I have to show you is something that I picked up for myself that I've been wanting for a really long time. It is the Circa Counter. Is it upside down? No, that's right. The Circa Counter by Grello and Gray. And I ordered it, I had been thinking about it for such a long time because I do have trouble keeping track of different um, functions and repeats in a pattern. I just get distracted easily. And um, even if I try writing it down, I always, like I forget what my method was, what I've ticked off. So I saw this um, on Jessie's Instagram feed from The Bon Vivant. I'm gonna put that name up so you know how to search it up if you don't know her. I love her feed. And she just had a beautiful baby. And she was using one and it just made me think, like, what am I waiting for? If it's gonna make my life easier and I can keep track of patterns, I need it. So I did pick it up and I love it. So each of these different um, things here, I don't know what you call them, the little tabs here, you can, um, you can mark off how many repeats you have and then you kind of move your, your counter. I don't know how to use it exactly just yet, but super excited to have this in my life and I'm hoping it's going to um, help me stay on track of things. I really have bigger knitting goals. I don't need to, you know, knit the fastest and knit the most, but I just, I still haven't found enough ease and time for knitting in my life. And so I think some of the house purging and the organizing of my business um, and production in here I feel like the ultimate goal is so that I have extra time with the boys this summer and also time to knit because I really, really enjoy the process and I really want knitted items in my life. And 
the last few months I just haven't finished much at all and it's kind of bothering me so I think that's why I have um, so many dream knitting projects right now my dad used to tell me when I was young always told me when we were going to fill our plates up at you know for dinner or anywhere at a party he'd always say oh my gosh your eyes are bigger than your stomach and I feel like I'm like that with knitting I want to knit all of the things like so many of us do um, but I really have goals so I'm trying to simplify and maybe that counter maybe that will help I had the most beautiful generous surprise in the mail and I really wanted to share it with you it came quite some time ago in this beautiful box I am always complaining um, and I don't mean to complain, but I'm always mentioning my super dry skin. I, I use face oil because my skin is so dry and it, it even happens in the summer now. It used to be just in the winter, but it's all year round. My hands are so dry, my cuticles are dry. I keep trying new hand creams and they work, but nothing has been that great. So I mention it quite a bit and I had a lovely message from Maria of Dillfield and I wanted to look at her name again because it's Maria spelt a little bit differently. Um, this is her beautiful card that was in the box and um, she does all natural cosmetics and beauty products and she's a one woman show and she reached out to me because she heard me talking about my dry skin asking if she could send me some stuff and so how could i refuse her products are gorgeous and i've been kind of saving them a little bit i've used a couple things but i really wanted to show them to you before i got my hands into them so um her company is dillfield and i think that's how you could yeah on instagram it's dillfield you can look her up she sent this i've tried this sunny lemon um, it's like a body butter she calls it a hand and body deep repair moisturizer I've used it today and I've used it a few times and it is really deeply moisturizing without being greasy and the smell is phenomenal so I'm excited to put that um, out now so I can use it a little more often she had this beautiful soap in here look at that I can't quite tell what the scent of that one is, but it's very, very pretty. Love it. Now, there were some other beautiful. So this, it looks like a soap, and it is a handcrafted soap, but it's a stain remover, a stain and odor remover for any household needs. Suitable for baby clothes. So it could probably be um, a wool wash or a delicate wash. Um, very excited to try these things. I love this. And her packaging is gorgeous. I just love all these brown paper packages. This one is a Lavender Shea Butter Bar with lavender essential oil and um, alkanet root extract. So another bar in there. And I'm excited, but this is what I've been saving because I wanted to show you before I put it in my bathroom. So a face moisturizer, beautiful container. This one is Rosehip and Pomegranate Face Moisturizer for dehydrated, dehydrated, dry, or mature skin. That's me. And an oil blend. I cannot wait to try this. It is Rosehip and Pomegranate Nourishing Vitamin Cocktail for dry or mature skin. I cannot wait. Oh, I love products like this. She included some cleansing grains that I could probably mix in with my cleanser or soap to scrub away dead skin. There was um, a honey and calendula lip balm, which is really nice. And you know what I realized is missing because I have been digging into it big time is the, um, the nail and cuticle cream. It is amazing. I would buy it 10 times over. I have the worst cuticles. I pick up my cuticles too. They're like, they're dry still right now, but they have really improved in the last few days of me using it. Um, so I would highly recommend uh, the cuticle oil and well, it's like a, it's a balm, but I'm sure there were oils in it. And definitely these products are the ones that I've tried so far. And I'm going to bring the rest of them into my bathroom now and give them all a try. Um, she's also a knitter. 
and her name is Maria. You can see on her card right here. If you like the idea of handmade, um, kind of pure and natural products, I would highly recommend giving her Instagram and website a look at. Um, she also sent a whole list, lots of information with the products so that I know exactly how to use them and what's in them. And um, really, really nice package. So thank you so much, Maria. It was so generous and so amazing. And um, such a treat. I really, um, I really have been enjoying the products I've started using so far. So last thing, um, I guess as a favorite thing for the episode, I haven't done too many in a while. Um, and you guys know if you've been watching me for a while, I love to cook and I love cookbooks. I have a little bit of an obsession with them. And I kind of lost, uh, the urge to cook for quite a while, but I think it's back and the change in weather has really been inspiring me and a couple of books. So I picked up the Magnolia Table Cookbook by Joanna Gaines. I know lots of you probably already have it. I've seen it all over Instagram. Um, and you know, I saw that she was coming out with a book and I'd heard about it before it came out or just when it came out and I thought, oh, that's really pretty, but I have so many books. I don't, like I don't need another one. And I only buy cookbooks now that really speak to me or really call out to me because I will enjoy looking through them over and over again and that I want to try a few of the recipes. But I was at Costco and I saw it and I flipped through it and I thought pretty much within the first 10 second flip that I need this because a lot of it, um, a lot of it is recipes that I have already recipes for like banana bread or um, you know, chicken spaghetti. There's there's things in here that I was like, well, I don't really need it. But then there were so many other recipes in here that I don't have recipes for and looked really nice. And all of the, um, the quiches to me were just perfect for this time of year and kind of easy dinners and kids love eggs. So lots of um, baking recipes in here that I really, really want to try scones and cinnamon squares and the banana bread. I have made it two or three times already and it's a winner. It's really, really amazing. And anything I've tried so far has been really successful. So I'm really happy with it, but it's also just a beautiful, beautiful book. So if you are um, a cookbook lover and you've thought about it, it's really good. I would recommend it. So that's kind of it. I think um, now that I've finally managed to sit down and do a podcast and get out all of my um, dream knitting ideas out there to the world, I'm going to have a reality check with myself and organize everything that I've put aside here and really figure out what's next. If you have suggestions on how you handle tons of dream knitting um, projects that are keeping you preoccupied and how to get them done, I would love to know. I'm thinking that if I spend, if I just block shorter amounts of time, but every day, then I will get more knitting done. I think my problem, and I don't know if I've said this before because I talk a lot, but I think my problem is because um, the nature of my work during the day now is sewing and it's physical and I'm creating and making things that I work, 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 and then I make dinner and clean. And by the time I sit on the couch, I'm actually really um, depleted. So even knitting, I'm too tired to do that. So I think if I block a little bit of time in the morning, just for myself with my coffee, even if it's 20 minutes, 30 minutes, just to get that little bit of knitting done, um, and then that might spark the desire to maybe finish sewing a little earlier, put everything away and not end up so tired at night. I don't know, I'm rambling. So I'm gonna let you go. I am excited to um, get my new website up and running. So for the next update, you if you do follow me on Instagram, you'll probably get lots of um, 
lots of messages when that's happening um, about the date and what's happening with my Etsy shop moving over to my website. I will try to keep everyone posted um, with lots of time to check out my new website before it opens, uh, before the shop actually opens. Everything is down right now as I'm just double checking a few things and making sure that the website is secure for um, shopping. But I'm really excited. I have lots more to finish up on the admin side and lots more to sew this summer. But um, thank you so much for joining me today and um, I will see you soon. Bye-bye.